Good afternoon. Welcome to the Art of Grinding and Software Studer Win and Studer Sim presentation Andrew and I will do for you today. I'm going to start with a quick little video here talking about the, uh, the, the stuff that's in Studer software. So Studer Win is basically the HMI between the operator and the machine. Quick Set is our quick way of setting up the wheels and the workpiece to the machine geometry. Contour Editor allows us to import parts into Studer Win. Pictogramming is the fast way and graphical way of programming our workpieces. OPC UA is our way to communicate with the outside world of what's in our machines and to get the data that the customers want out of our machine. And the Studer technology is based on 100 years of Studer's grinding experience. So that's all integrated into the technology calculator of Studer Win. Studer Win programming is our offline software that allows an operator or a, uh, an engineer to program at the machine or at their, at their desks. The integrated tools such as Form, HSM, Thread are all extra options and extra software that you can purchase to uh, put on your machine to allow you to be more profitable um, and generate these unique contours and geometries. Studer coordinates, the last one is a, kind of a jig grinding option that we can do with the machine. Uh, next slide. So if we look at Studer Win and integrated tools, it's all those are now on the control, seeing that the machine has a, a Windows-based control, we're able to put these right at the operator's hand so when he's standing in front of the machine, he can go through and, and program um, right to the machine with the, the geometries required to manufacture the part. Um, Studer Win offline, or Studer Win programming is the, the offline version of our software so that an operator or a, an engineer can program from their desk. Uh, it also is a Studer Win training that we can get with that, which allows um, operators to learn the control, learn how to set up the control when they're um, at a PC. That way there's no risk of collisions on the machine and it, it gets the operator a little more freedom to try to do things and understand the software. Um, so if we start looking at how we want to import geometry into our uh, control, the easiest way to do that is with using a CAD file or a DXF file. You know, here we have just a PDF. We can program using that, it's just kind of a pain. So if we can bring this file in as a DXF, we can generate the tool paths that we need from the CAD file. So what I really need out of this file is the red lines on the screen. So when I open this up, I have a workpiece project manager that shows all my um, grinding tools, my, my grinding wheels, where things are located in the machine, where my part programs are. So from this, I can start to bring in all my geometry. So if we look at this, it's going to scroll through and we can look at some dressing tools that are already in the machine. We look at the grinding wheels that are on the machine. So there's two OD wheels and an ID wheel on this machine. So what I really want is I want to bring in some geometry. So I highlight my geometry tab, I go down, I open up my importer, I go into my Suter Geo importer, open up a file location, I choose the correct file that I want to bring in, and I bring that geometry into Studer Geo importer. I highlight the external and there's a quick um, automatic generation of that external profile. I save that. I then highlight the internal de geometry profile, use the automatic tool and it grabs the internal geometry, save that. Uh, once I'm happy with that, I can now bring that into my 2D side of where I can draw in Studer Win. And if I'm happy with the geometry, I can now bring that into my workpiece project. So now I've gone through and I've generated a, a, a CAD file, a 3D image inside Studer Win. So it makes it a lot easier to program using this. The next thing I want to do is I want to 
I want to grind uh, the form that's on the end of this part, so I need to make my wheel look like that form. <clears throat> so I can go through and I can create a wheel shape based off the angled wheel that already is in my machine. So basically I drag this wheel shape to the geometry and then I cut out the shape around that. And once I get that done, I can now look at my dressing tool to see which tool I need, what shape it should be in. And it generates a tool path to, gener or to, um, to dress that shape into the wheel. <coughs> Excuse me. So I can look at my contour to see the, the tool go around the shape. I can look for any, any issues where it might cause a collision uh, where we would have interference in that tool itself. So now I've got this shape on my wheel and I can do my plunge of that, that whole geometry in one, one shot. Uh, what I want to look now is what different ways we can do this. So if we use Studer Dress, which is another way to make this shape, my video start here. Um, once I start generating my program, I go into Studer Dress and it highlights this red area on the screen that shows me the area that I need to take out of the wheel. It generates the tool path for me, um, how that's gonna happen. And if we, I'm getting lost here. If we go to the next screen, when we compare these two methods, this is a normal dress where you see it's the full shape on every path that it takes. So every dressing cycle uh, starts a long ways away and it takes three hours to, to, uh, to dress this form into the wheel. If we use the Studer Win with the Studer Dress, you can see how all the, all the tool paths are, are short. It's constantly in contact with the wheel. Uh, so 98% of the time we're looking at where it's actually dressing the wheel. And we go from three hours to a one hour dress. So a considerable time savings when we're using Studer Dress. Uh, integrated tools when we're using Studer Contour. So another way to generate that shape would be to have a radius on the corner of the wheel and go through this, uh, this area and use the wheel to generate the shape instead of dressing it on there. So what we need to do is, let's get this to start. So I open up my program again. I go down to where I wanna insert this into my part cycle. I go over to the pictograms and I choose a contour cycle. Once that opens up, I can go in and I can start the Studer Contour Basic Editor. Now this opens up the, uh, the geometry in Studer Contour Basic. Now I go through and I select the geometry that I want to grind. So I can verify that's all correct and I apply this. And the green line is the contour that I'm going to grind. The values at the bottom are um, Various ones that are set, we can choose those and we can change them. There's a drop down box that lets us choose which ones we want to use. We generate an ISO code, which in reality, all we really want to see is the, the tool path run. So we can simulate the path of the grinding wheel through these features and generate the shape. So for the, the one-off parts where we only want to do just a couple parts and we don't want to spend the time dressing that into the, into the part, it's an, a, a better way to do this. We now come back into the part program. We highlight the, the A value, which is our grind stock allowance. We put in 300 microns. <clears throat> and we're just going to choose a default value of uh, speeds and feeds to grind that cycle. So that's how we can do this a, a different way rather than uh, dressing that form into the wheel. Uh, talk a little bit about Studer Technology Integrated again. <clears throat> I know we've talked about it numerous times, but so we're going to go through and we're going to add a new cycle onto this part. So I go back to my part program. I go back to my, uh, my pictogramming cycles. <clears throat> and I'm going to add a plunge cycle with oscillation to the top left diameter. So I select my selection tool. I go back over to my geometry highlight the area I want to grind and now I go find the cycle I want to use. <coughs> We're using a plunge with oscillation cycle. You can see it hangs off a little bit to the, 
to the right, so I need to change my Z value to move the wheel over some. So we now reposition the wheel and we can see it's got an oscillating stroke to it. Now there's different values we can use. It's already assigned the basic grind values to the cycle. I can now go in and choose. Uh, there's a, uh, a, a more aggressive feed rate, a uh, more accurate and a better surface finish. So we can choose a couple different uh, ways we want to process that part. I can also change with that slide um, different infeed uh, speeds or different spark out speeds. So when I go back to my part cycle and we can see the values have changed. If I want to save this as a, uh, a, a new feature, I can, I can save that. I'll do that in a second. Right now it's looking through and we can go through and look at all the technological values that the student now lets you see where before they used to keep it in the background. So we can look at all the Q primes and get an understanding of what each part of that cycle is doing. So if I like this new process that I've just come up with with changing the slide rule, I can go in at the bottom and I can save that as a, uh, a special way to, uh, or a special process that I can use the next time I program a part similar to this. Uh, Studer's a universal software, so we're looking at it here, it's looking on, a, on an OD-ID machine. It's also used on uh, ID-only machines or Studer Sim, which Andrew will talk about. So this, this software is generally on every Studer machine that we sell. It's universal, it's programmed the same, it's set up the same. So if you can run an ID machine with Studer Win on it, you can run an a OD Universal or a production universal or a production machine. Um, they're all basically the same with Studer Win. Uh, talk about a little bit about a data exchange. How do we get our, uh, our, our programs from the PC up to the machine? So there's a couple different ways to do it. <clears throat> if we are basically using a thumb drive, we use it just like any other thumb drive. We put it in our laptop or our PC, we store our files on it, we walk over to the machine and upload them into the control. If we are connected through a network, uh, we then map a network drive to a server and the PC can upload to the server and our machine can grab the file from the server. This allows us to keep all of our files up to date. I can download them to the machine, run my program. Any changes I have made, I can upload back to the server and they're stored there for the next time uh, we have to run that part again. So if we look a little bit at the machine organizer, if you have multiple machines and you have Studer Win offline, this is the screen you're gonna start with. <clears throat> From here, you get a listing of each machine. Um, everything that is on that machine as far as software <clears throat> is in the machine as, as well. You can run this as a programming where you can program offline or you can run it as a training machine. So we start from here to, to actually launch our software. 